going to read um, Magic Treehouse Merlin Missions number 19, Abe Lincoln at Last, chapter 11. And this chapter is called Abe Lincoln at Last. So we'll get a surprise about Abraham Lincoln in this one. Jack and Annie looked around in a daze. They were under the trees near the treehouse, standing in the same spot where they'd sipped the potion. The air was chilly but bright. A fresh breeze rustled the branches. The magic ended, said Jack, stunned. It ended before we could complete our mission. I know, Annie said, and we didn't get to say goodbye to Sam. I didn't even thank him for the quill pen and the ink, said Jack. You know what a quill pen is? Um, like a feather that you can dip in ink. Mm -hmm. That's what they use a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. I know. These were his treasures, said Annie. She held up the goose feather and the ink jar that Sam had given them. Wait, that's so weird, said Jack. We're looking for a feather. And Sam gave us a pen made out of a feather. Annie gasped. Oh, look, Jack, she pointed towards the carriageway. A tall man in a dark coat and a high black hat was striding towards the grove of trees. He turned his head as if he were searching for something. At last, said Jack. Mr. President, Annie called. She thrust the quill pen and ink bottle back into her pocket and ran towards Abraham Lincoln. Wait, said Jack, running after her. What do we say? We'll figure it out, said Annie. Mr. President! Abraham Lincoln turned and looked in their direction. He froze and stared at them as if we were both astonished and afraid. What's wrong with him, thought Jack. As they got closer to the president, Jack and Annie slowed to a walk. Abraham Lincoln kept staring at them as if they were ghosts. Hello, sir, Annie said shyly. Jack was speechless. The creases in the president's face gave him a deeply worried look. And here's a picture of Abraham Lincoln with Jack and Annie. His gray eyes stared at them without blinking. So it is you, he said in a hushed voice. Tad told me your names, but I could not believe it might really be you. What do you mean, Annie asked. You don't know who I am, he said. Do you know who he is? Any idea who um, Abraham Lincoln is? Tad's daddy? He's Tad's daddy, but let's, we'll find out something else. You're Abraham Lincoln, said Annie, President of the United States. Yes, but I spent the day with you once long ago, said the President, and you vanished right before my eyes. We did, said Annie. Outside our log cabin in Indiana, said the president. Indiana, said Jack. Yes, it was the day my father brought my stepmother home and my new sisters and brother. Oh, oh, said Annie. What, said Jack. You were? Sam. Sam, said Annie. You were Sam, said Jack. He couldn't believe it. The president nodded. Annie laughed. So when you told me... We told you we were looking for Abraham Lincoln. You played a prank on us and told us your name was Sam. Abraham Lincoln smiled. I haven't seen you since that day so long ago, he said, and you haven't changed at all. I don't understand. Are you angels? Are you a dream? Jack was too stunned to answer. It wasn't long ago. It was today, he thought. Or maybe not. Time and magic were confusing things. We're just regular kids, not angels, said Annie, but maybe you should think of it all as a dream, a dream with a little magic thrown in. Abraham Lincoln nodded slowly. Then he smiled. I remember you tried to do my chores, he said, and you thought some wild creature was chasing you. And you told me that your interjections were, oh, wow, and oh, man. Right, said Jack, smiling. You also said you loved learning, and you loved to read, said the president, and you loved to write stories. And you said you loved to do that too, said Annie. So you gave us these. She pulled the ink bottle and the quill pen out of her apron pocket. These were yours once, remember? Abraham Lincoln stared at the ink bottle and feather pen. Yes, he said. I made them from blackberry roots and a goose feather. Oh, man, whispered Jack. For the first time, it fully dawned on him that Sam, who was really Abraham Lincoln, had given them a feather. The rhyme was starting to make perfect sense. Why have you come back? asked the president. Now Jack knew exactly what to say. We have to give you a message of hope, he answered. He reached for the notebook in his pocket. Jack's right, said Annie. 
Just a second. She opened the ink bottle and dipped the goose feather pen into the ink. Then she handed the pen to Jack. What should we say? She whispered. Well, the Civil War is going to have a good ending, Jack whispered back. All the country will come together. With freedom for everybody, whispered Annie. I'll write something about all that, said Jack. He thought for a second, and using the goose feather pen, he scratched a message on a page in his notebook. Never lose hope. This land will live peacefully as one nation one day, with freedom for everyone. You told us to use your quill pen and your blackberry ink to write something special, Jack said. He tore out the page and handed it to the press in the United States. This is it. Abraham Lincoln read the words on the paper. Then he looked at Jack and Annie. The crease, when he looked, the creases in his face had softened. His eyes had grown bright. Oh, wow, he said softly. Jack and Annie laughed. Do you really think so? The president asked. Do you promise? Yes, I need to add something, said Jack. He took the note back from the president and wrote, We give you our word, Jack and Annie. A shout came from the distance. Pa, pa! It was Tad. He was running up the carriageway with Willie right behind him. Mr. President, we have to leave now, said Jack. Really? said Abraham Lincoln. He looked sad for a moment. Then he looked at his boys running towards him. Yes, of course, I understand, he said. We'll never forget our times with you, Sam, said Annie. Nor will I forget, said Abraham Lincoln. The boys were getting closer. Here, sir, said Jack. He gave the note back to the president. Then he and Annie started moving away. Goodbye, they called to Abraham Lincoln. The president waved and put their note in his pocket. There he is, waving at them. Then Jack and Annie quickly climbed up the ladder. Inside the treehouse, they looked out the window. They saw Abraham Lincoln hurrying to meet his boys. When they caught up to them, when he caught up to them, he wrapped his arms around them both. They were all laughing. Abraham Lincoln's a good dad, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack, smiling. Well, we'd better go now before Tad tries to take the treehouse away from us. Annie laughed. He'll be pretty surprised when he discovers it's disappeared, she said. She picked up the Pennsylvania book and pointed to a picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go home, she said. The wind started the, to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster, and everything was still, absolutely still. 